Right, so I got this uh, new thing I've been tinkering with in the car. Um, the 20 valves have got a notoriously small valve spring. Um, as you can see in here, it's not very big diameter. You can't get a lot of valve spring pressure out of them. So running high boost pressures starts to become difficult with uh, valve float. So I had a problem where we were anti-lagging the car or running it on uh, high RPM limiters and it was actually jumped the shim Say if I had an ignition cut, fuel would go into the exhaust, it would explode in the exhaust, the valves would fall away because the pressure of the exhaust gas was higher than that of what the spring could keep shut. So the valve would fall away and because the, it was away from the base, base circle of the lobe, the shim would actually jump out as it would bounce, the valve would bounce. So what happened is I made these. So I developed a little product, which is a Teflon spacer ring that don't weigh a hell of a lot and they are made of Teflon so they can withstand high temperature and basically the shim, this is a factory shim but I have another version for aftermarket shims that you can buy. Um, this, it's actually an interference fit to the, to the shim as you can see, I'm not holding it, that's actually an interference fit. Now what happens is as this is up inside the actual bucket, it physically can't allow the shim to jump off. So yeah. as it's running up and down, if the shim was to try and jump off, it actually can't go anywhere. It can't easily move out. Yeah, yeah right. It, so all it can do is go up and down yeah. and then line back up with the valve. So if I was to then look at my valve tip and say, okay, my valve tip doesn't have a lot of any damage on it, it's a brand new valve. If I came back and I started seeing like a mushroom effect over the tip of the valve, I know I'm going to valve float, but at yeah. least my shims aren't gonna jump off and cause havoc. Yeah. Because when shims jump off, it damages the tip of the valve as the shim bounces around. The, the edge, the tip of the valve gets all damage over it. Uh, in worst case scenarios, if the shim goes sideways and pushes down on the spring retainer, the collets can jump out and then drops the valve straight in the engine and uh, you lose the head, you lose the piston, you lose a lot. If, if debris goes through the turbine, you lose your turbo as well. So this is just a little bit of insurance I've given I'm going to trial on my own engine first, and uh, if uh, I, it works, then I'm going to be releasing it to customers and people who are trying to do silly boost pressures on 20 valves, which is not a lot of people because it's probably the stupidest engine to do it on because of those valve springs. The valve springs are limited, yeah. Yeah, as we're a 16 valve 4A, you can put twin spring kits in and get 90 pounds seated pressure yep. or more and yep. run about 60 pounds of boost plus, no problem. Yeah. As we're this one, um, I've run 32 pounds and I think that's sort of going to be the limit. Um, I'm going to try more, uh, but obviously you can do more power on less boost if your turbine's bigger. So if I go to the next frame up and then limit that to say 30 pounds, it makes more power, but the, for the amount of pressure, uh, but the volume is higher, so you can make more power. Yeah. Essentially, so. Yeah, but the, this turbo is the 3076 GDX Gen, 1, Gen 2, Gen 1, and... It's been rebuilt by Hospital Industries, Alex. Yep. Um, so it's, we've, we've put ceramic ball bearings in it, gapless rings, and we've done a few other mods. We've balanced it a lot better from OEM tolerance. Yeah. Um, so we should max this turbo out around the 600 horsepower mark, I think, uh, on this engine. Um, but the next turbine that I'll be going to would be like a 3582 Gen 3 uh, custom built turbo from High School. And we're gonna remake the exhaust manifold to move the turbo up forward, yep. so pro mod style. And then just have a short intake pipe with a pod filter, but move it right up forward so we can put a, uh, like a four inch dump pipe off the back of it and stuff like that. Right. So. Well, that'd be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any engine related questions that you'd like to ask Matt, leave them down in the comment section. And next time I'm in the workshop with Matt, I'll fire up the camera. And as long as your questions are relevant, I'll be sure to ask him and we'll be making a video on it. So head on down to that comment section, leave us a question, and we might just answer it in the next video. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks guys.